Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite blade genres, the Spanish Navaja. But first, I'm going to do a quick slideshow and read some excerpts from some different writings that speak about the Navaja and the people who wield them. The Navaja was first adopted as a fighting knife by the people of the Andalusia in southern Spain, including the Spanish gypsies of the day, the Gitanos. In this part of Spain, knife fighting was regularly taught as a skill, often passed down from father to son as a rite of passage to adulthood. Among Navaja aficionados, the Barados of Malaga and Seville were cited as the most skilled practitioners of fighting with the Navaja. The skill displayed by the Spanish desperado in handling his knife is wonderful. This weapon to which all are so partial is a wicked looking affair from one to two feet long and called a navaja from its resemblance to a razor. The blade is of the finest Toledo steel. With his cloak or jacket wrapped about his left arm, his formidable weapon glittering in his right hand, and his lift body poised for a spring, he is an interesting study for the spectator, as well as for his antagonist. The thumb is pressed tightly along the back of the blade that every advantage may be taken of the flexibility of the wrist, in a struggle where the space of an inch is often a matter of life and death. Navajas crossed the hands and drew the blood of soldiers and sailors, rogues and ruffians, and diplomats and aristocrats both in and out of Spain's borders. The use of the Navaja fostered a mystique, not only from Seville's back streets, but also from the seedy waterfronts of Barcelona and the cosmopolitan promenades of Madrid. Regardless of their original intent, the Navaja represented the ultimate means for resolving disagreements, misunderstandings, and problems that arose in dockside bars, darkened alleys, and an untold number of places not found in any guidebook. Places where there is little reliance on legal recourses. Places where you either catch a glimpse of steel and live, or miss it and never know why you died. If you've never been exposed to the Navaja, it's steeped in rich history, much like our American buoy. A lot of people say a lot of the best characteristics from the buoy came in part from the Navaja. So the gypsies and the common folk learn to use what they could. And there's Lady, there's Max. Um, and in that, the Navaja was born. The 19th century was the beginning of when the Navaja, I believe, got a lock back. Um, primarily window locks, different type of locks. Only big problem is being someone that loves Navajas is that most Navajas you come across these days are basically tourist type items. Uh, here is an example. It's a fine knife, but when you come from a base a, a, a basic background of custom knives, hello Max, the Navaja like this quickly loses its luster. Now these work, so it's a window lock with a ratchet and they get that famous, hello Max, but they sound like a Spanish caraca, listen. That's the ratchet of the lock going open. Now again, the knives are held, thumb on back like that. Um, this is a typical looking I would say tourist to better grade Navaja. Shake it, it rattles. Uh, it, it's not the kind of quality that, that I'm used to or that people that are, are used to fine customs can even think to carry as an EDC or even a, a self-defense tool. That brings the story to where we're at now. I was online searching Navajas, trying to find a quality, authentic Navaja. It didn't have to be made of the old materials, but hopefully something that was authentic, something that was steeped in tradition and something that gave that, that visual raw feel of the original Spanish Navaja. That brings me to someone on Blade Forms. Blade Forms has been a huge wealth of knowledge over the years. There I met a gentleman and I wrote it down so I could get it right. I met a gentleman named Enrique Liasi or Liasi who's on blade forms. He spoke of a maker named Miguel Barbado. Miguel comes from a small town from the mountains near Madrid. And Miguel makes traditional Navajas in his own modern interpretation. He makes fixed blades. He does a, a, a lot of different blades.
actually have one on order right now. And I was immediately impressed with Miguel's work. I shot him a quick message and he quickly replied. And we decided on a Navaja from the 19th century that is, I think it's called the Malaga style, I believe. After a brief conversation, we talked about different materials and I had an order placed and very quickly, Miguel delivered a very fine, very fine Navaja. This knife has titanium bolsters, G10 scales. It does have a traditional window lock. It does make the ratcheting sound. It is Bowler 590, the steel. Um, immediately, I can tell you so many things I like about the knife. First and foremost, the lockup is dead, dead solid. There is no wiggle, there is no play. This is as fine a built folding knife, and I've handled some of the finest folding knives out there that I felt when it comes to lockup and being solid. It's got a, a visceral raw look to it that I, I wanted and I like. He etches the blade and gives it a, a very interesting dark aged look. He, he did the, the bolsters, he anodized the titanium and bronze. Again, it's a, it's a window lock, which is a lock back. You lift the lock up, and then the braid just slips right over. To open it, thumb stud, just a quick, I'll undo it slow so you can hear the ratchet. Very positive lock. Now, one thing I'm really digging about the blade, besides the traditional Navaja style handle, which actually fits my hand very well, is the whole knife facilitates what reading the old Navaja stuff apparently was an old Spanish grip, but it's also the Filipino grip where you basically take your thumb and the thumb rides on the back like that, giving you a lot of indexing. Also, your thumb is squeezing on the lock, pushing it down. I'm gonna do a quick video showing this knife close up and basically opening and closing it. I wanted to give everybody a bird's eye view of this knife. Um, very well done. Definitely has a distinct Navaja shape. The blade steel is Bowler N 590CO. The bolsters are titanium, G10 scales. It's got a window lock, which is a, a back lock, a very interesting lock, old lock, but very secure. It does have the ratcheting Caraca sound, traditional Navajas have at times. Again, this knife affords the Filipino grip, which I've really come to like in a lot of my smaller blade handling. It really gives fantastic in indexing it makes the blade very lively. Um, again, I, I love this knife. I love the feel. I love the shape. Just an interesting knife, super well made. Again, when you're gripping like that, you're literally pushing down on the window lock, keeping everything nice and tight. To shut it, you just lift up, swing shut. Very nice. So the next thing I did is ask Miguel because I don't carry my folders in pocket. I carry a gun on my right side. I carry all my knives either cross straw in front of my left hip or behind my left hip. Even folding knives, I carry them in a, a, a scabbard or a pouch horizontal on my belt. I asked Miguel if he knew of a leathersmith over there since he had the knife there and I wanted a, a very authentic Spanish hole type you know, project. And he did. He came up with a, a fantastic leathersmith named Jose Quercur. I'm reading it. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. I suppose he's one of the finest Spanish leathersmiths out there. He quickly, and again, I'll show you his logo on his leather. Made this beautiful leather pouch. Again, the knife. Lift up the window lock. Pivot it shut. This goes on my belt. This knife goes right in super secure, it's not going out. I carry it right there. This knife does not have a pocket clip. I'm glad it doesn't have a pocket clip. I'm not a pocket clip guy. I carry all my folders horizontal in some type of pouch. So there it is. I'm gonna put up um, Miguel's website. I'm gonna recommend him wholeheartedly. I have one of his fixed blades on order right now. I'm completely impressed with this Smith and I'm very happy to have another great friend and another great maker in another country to add to the many I know. And if you're looking for a traditional Navaja that has is high quality and that uses modern materials, Miguel's your man. I mean, this is honestly a fine custom knife at a very, very reasonable price. 
So again, love the knife. I can't thank you enough, Miguel. Miguel Barbudo, traditional Spanish blades with a totally different twist on things, and it's a really good twist. Thanks for looking, really appreciate it.